Top of Mason in San Francisco. I'm Schmitty and there's Talking Schmidt. Today on the show, we got the author of the book, Top of Mason. That's right, kids, Walker Ryan. If you haven't got a copy of this book, pick it up. Hey, Walker's not just an author, he's a pro skater as well. Support for Talking Schmidt is brought to you by Manscaped. The best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, kids. It's the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. We're going to give you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code shout out at manscaped.com. Just type in the code shout out and the rest is smooth sailing. Imagine shaving with a sleek, well-designed and optimized trimmer that makes shaving time your favorite time in the bathroom. I'll tell you this, I'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0, and I'm blown away by the performance. The craftsmanship and details on the 4.0 are next level. The fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. That's right, kids. Advanced skin safe technology. Now you can feel confident shaving those family jewels. Did I mention wireless charging? Men, if you've been shaving with the same nut trimmer on your face, you've been doing it wrong. No person wants to end up with pubes in their mouth. 
Get 20% off and free shipping with the code shout out shout out manscape.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscape.com and use code shout out. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Shout out. All right. It is the Tao of Skateboarding book, Rolling Through Life, a Skateboard Philosophy by the author that brought us Trim Camp, Mr. A.E. Gold. This book is a culmination of eight years of interpretation from the Tao Te Ching. It is written for all the mothers out there who have children who enjoy skateboarding. And I'm going to read one of my favorite verses. Verse six, spirit. The spirit of skateboarding never dies. It is the infinite sidewalk to mysteries within mysteries. It is the seed of yin, the spark of yang. Always elusive, endlessly available. This thing's 43 pages. Bryce, you know you need a copy. Get this book. I think you can Google it. It's out on Amazon, but maybe other bookstores. It's a fun read. I read it one afternoon, but you can keep rereading it. The Towel of Skateboarding book, rolling through a skateboard philosophy. Get your copy today. This is Walker Ryan, or this is going to be a rough one. I'm Walker Ryan, and this is Talking Schmidt. It's cool, like tonight is the night. Here we go again. Just give it the old cars turn, isn't it? Our big dog's in. Schmitty. 96 times, Schmitty. Thanks, Schmitty. We on? Schmitty. Talking Schmidt. That's called going to the hospital, bitch. I'd be <laughs> shit my pants. Man. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. It's right. about the one. The one. The one. Who is this guy who thinks he's tough shit? What's up? We're tastemakers. Come on, Schmitty. What the fuck? Let's hear it for Greg Smith. Yeah! A little nervous because this is my first ever interview with an author but he's also <laughs> a pro skateboarder he's got his own podcast i'm calling him the uh 2021 satva leong he's the entrepreneur Ooh. of uh skateboarding this is walker ryan kids how you Hell doing yeah if only i could front side no slide like satva though Ooh. never did one of my moves he's the smoothest if only I could spin records like Safa Young. Yeah. Is he still in the city doing that? <laughs> he is in the city. Uh, or is he doing uh, a million other rad things? Dude, you never know with Safa. Yeah. He's yeah. always, he's just fucking. I went to his house. I did an interview with him and we did it at his house. And he was telling me how he reduced his record collection a lot. And that was painful. Uh -huh. So I'm not sure if he's DJing as much. He has a kid and the whole deal. But uh, cool. yeah. How are you doing? Good. I am you, in Bolinas, California right now. Are you living there? Uh, we have this family house um, that we've had, you know, since the 40s, basically. And for the first time, the house has internet. Like, Bolinas actually as a whole has internet. They've been <laughs> stuck on, like, a DSL that they all share, that basically the town shares, and it's been really bad. Uh -huh. At the house, we put in a satellite internet, but it was just garbage. So we could never really come here my wife works for a tech company and she, you know, needs to uh, be on zoom calls all day, basically. And it was just impossible. So for the first time we, we like blocked a month where we could just be here. My sister came out, my mom was here and we've just been posted, which has been so cool. Damn. Cause, that is cause cool. I've been coming here my whole life. Like obviously um, it's a good town. Yeah, it's great. And it's just so fun to actually like spend more than just a kind of a long weekend or something here. Do you so, surf? I don't. I've never gotten in the water here like that, which is really embarrassing. Because well, get it's a such coffee, a walk out, and look for Max Schaff. He'll be there. All I need are some tasty waves, cool buzz, and I'm fine. He cruises out here a lot. I, he used to. He used oh, to go cool. like every like I don't know Monday at eight or something. Like he was on a regiment. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. It, I have seriously zero excuse other than like oh, I don't have a wetsuit. Like, I think there's even a surfboard here that I could probably. It's a good place out. to learn, dude. That's yeah, they your look spot. small. They yeah. look, the waves look small and, and they and just it's go protected. straight across the channel. Yeah. Although not too protected. There, it is. They do call it the snack bar <laughs> where all the great whites come in and feed. I, I feel like I'm a little scarred because one of our 
caretakers. We've always had like a live-in caretaker here at the house in Bolinas. Um, right now we have this awesome guy named Keith, who's a bird artist who's been here for 20 something years. But before him was this guy, Peter, and he, he would do research on great white sharks out on the Farallon Islands. So we had all these like really ghetto uh, home videos of his research, you know, like filming the sharks and stuff. And I think it's just always left an impression on me. Like this water is sharky. Yeah. yeah north of the Golden Gate, it gets a little sketchy. Yeah. Um, let's let's dive into your upbringing. Where were you born and raised? So born in Santa Rosa, California, but raised primarily in Santa Elena, California, which is a small town in uh, north of Napa, where okay. I, I, we ran in. I ran into you uh, one time on the streets of I think on my street. Yeah. So Santa Elena, um, Santa Elena, basically until I left for college and since then i've just kind of been bouncing around floating how did you discover skateboarding in saint helena so i want to say it was just um you know like the way any kid does you see someone else doing it you're like i want to try it my friend's older brother had a board and so we would like play with it and both my parents were born in san francisco and like had ties to san francisco obviously their their whole lives they grew they grew up in marin but um they were, you know, always, we were, we were always going to the city. And so like, I think they just, you know, got me a board one year um, for my birthday and, you know, coupled with some, some uh, FTC videos and like, there was always access to like, uh, you know, FTC and skates on hate and like some huh. of those shops. Um, and how did yeah, you know, know about FTC? Well, I mean, I think when you you're you come into the city, like as much as my parents did, and you're looking up the where's a skate shop, you know, oh, like, okay. that's where you go. No way. Um, yeah, and so it was just an obs- you know, like anyone gets into it, just an early obsession from uh, you know seven was when I got my first board, and you know, I just stayed stayed hooked. There was a weird little stint though, where I didn't have a board for a few months because my father was working off and on in um, the ex-Soviet Republic of Georgia in, you know, like Soviet Union. Yeah. Um, he was, he was part of a joint venture winemaking, wine uh, joint venture winery. He was a winemaker. Okay. And so we would go out there periodically for like three to four months, some extended summer vacations, essentially. They, my, my parents were just taking me out of school for a little bit longer. And uh, I left my first skateboard there in Georgia with like the neighborhood kids. Cause it was like, we all shared it. And I just I knew they were going to get another one. So um, I had like a little stint where I didn't have one. And it's, it's funny actually, because I'm in the kids room in the, in our family house here. This is uh-huh. my, my old bunk bed. And it was on this floor that like, I got a board after that like period, like I still want to skate, but I just hadn't really, you know, it's like special occasions. You got new skateboards. And I got a new one in, uh, right here out in the street, like picked it up again. Fuck, uh, sick. So, like, uh, so yeah. you've had the Bolinas place your whole life. Yeah. So my grandparents moved here, moved to Bolinas in like the 1940s. And this was the house they, they got. Oh, when they damn. Moved here. They came from uh, the Midwest. Nice, and yeah, so dude. we, we uh, were very fortunate to like keep the family, keep it like as my grandmother, my dad's, like my dad kind of lived here but they he eventually grew up in marin because i think what happened is they bought this house thinking it was very close to san francisco not really realizing the geography that you have to go over like a huge mountain to to get to normal civilization and i think in the 40s bolinas was just like a super nothing town um so luckily they kept this house because it's a very unique house it's like a it's it was a was a coal hauling barge so it's like a barge turned into a house like it's very oh, very unique right uh, yeah so i've so we've been coming here my whole life but we you know we we rent it to family friends and that's kind of how it pays for itself who are your dudes was penal code like being played a lot when you're young first, and mike carroll's like your first, guy or what yeah that was like my first video really between that one and trilogy i'm always a little unsure but i'm pretty sure bobby pulio who opened Penal Code was the first like skateboarder I watched. And then oh. just, you know, obviously the whole video is just incredible, especially because, you know, 
my parents would go into San Francisco. My, my aunt actually lived in the apartments above uh, in the, you know, uh, EMB Plaza. Oh, so, really? Like, yeah. Like, so he we discovered would... how the hideout. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, that was, I would roll around there, but it was mainly like watching Penal Code Pier 7 for me and like wanting to skate that anytime we'd go into the city, you know? So like, it was just so cool to have a video that like I could then go and like see and and try to piece together the insanity of of skateboard tricks, you know, because I I didn't really have like a crew of skaters in my town until I was like middle school. Mm-hmm. So in the early years, it was just me watching those videos and then just trying to figure out how to do kickflips and the whole thing. So like Lavar and Marcus and Henry oh, yeah. and yeah, Ooh, I'd well. say I'd say Lavar was like my number one favorite because of his switch skating and just the confusion I had as a little kid, not knowing is he regular? Is he goofy? Like, I don't get it, but like the whole, uh, everything happening there in that era of skating was like so magical. Yeah. And, uh, I'm lucky that those videos had such incredible music for me. I feel like it was just like, it not only influenced my take on skating, but just music for the rest of my, my life. Yeah, those were those were the days. Um, yeah. Who was like? Do you remember meeting somebody for the first time? Like actually seeing somebody in person? That for was- sure. Like Carl was one of them. Mike oh. York, you know, like Mike York had that that good energy. Like, and I remember, you know, going up and and you know saying something stupid. But Carl for sure left like the biggest impression because he was so Carl, so sweet and like. You know, I'm alling up the little pier curb, but he's like cheering me on. You know, like I, I'll, I'll never forget that kind of thing. So, All right, for sure. Yeah, good uh, positive energy. What's up with Billy Pepper? You ever run into him in like a market up there or anything? So that's what's kind of funny. Like I obviously knew Billy Pepper was the guy in from Napa, but I only saw him one time at a skate at the Napa Park, oh, and right. it was like such an embarrassing interaction because I. I like asked, I did the thing that kids do where you're like, do the trick I saw in the video. Like I saw him, he <laughs> skate that park in the four and one commercial and like asked him to do tricks and he had to just be like, nah, dude, not going to, not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I'd, I'd always hear stories about Billy Pepper and like how he could, he could have like a gnarly temper. And if, if you were at the park when he showed up, like you, you everyone would kind of like clear out. Like I've always heard different eras of, of, of Billy, but I, I never really knew him. Like I, we have mutual friends, obviously, and, and uh, right. there's, um, I don't have personal uh, encounters. Did you skate that park a bunch, the Napa Park? Not really. I was like, it's not that rad. A hater. <laughs> I was kind of a hater of it from a young age, you know, like I was more partial to Santa Rosa Park, like Piner. Oh. So like, I, there would be more of an excuse for us to go to Santa Rosa for like Costco runs or just some, you know, like. What's that, what like 40 are. minutes? How far yeah, is Yeah, about there? like 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. You go through Calistoga and then over the hill. Mm-hmm. Um, so, And I just love that park. I feel like that park opens so many like possibilities. And like, so before I met people at like Pierce, you know, like fanned out on pros at Pier 7, it was Tony Trujillo and random sightings at, a, at Santa Rosa that really like at a young, young age, I remember. Ah, Mohawk. Probably, yeah. <laughs> like just methods or whatever he was. Just he could charging. just do every kind of fly out trick. It was so sick to watch him skate that. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, and so then, when does like this become more than just a toy? Like, oh, I'm getting kind of good at this, or I want to pursue this like to more of a level. Yeah. Well, probably Santa Rosa Park when I won my first competition at 10 years old, the castle under 10, 10 and unders. There was one other person in my age division and I, and I beat him out. So I was like, you know what? There's there's hope. Head to me. head. I got this. <laughs> Were you on no, the course think, at the same time? Yeah, I think it was one of those jam sessions, you know, and like yeah. I could do I could early grab higher out of the <laughs> out of the one of the small bowls probably no, way. Uh, no so i don't i don't know i feel like i was obsessed with the idea of getting sponsored from that age like 10 like i was like sending sponsor tapes to spitfire and just like like you know terrible like doing 
frontside flips off a curb cut type videos, but like, you know, trying and dreaming, but I never got sponsored until 14. It was played against sports in San Rafael. Do you remember that skate shop? Like I know like, play it again sports. Uh, no, I don't know about it, the one in San Rafael. Did yeah, it, that location was funny because they had a, uh, they had a like all play it again sports. They had you, they would like buy used product, and uh -huh. so they, a lot of skaters from the city would come out and like sell their mm. boards. You know, like rather than just giving them to someone at the at sure. The, Spot, they could probably make like three or four dollars off like a, each one in a stack you know so like uh -huh. that was uh, a shop i would go to really when we'd come out here visit family in marin and so i gave them a tape and they sponsored me and that actually led to my my first board sponsor which was ron allen's energy so ron yes. allen was like the really the first person to like give me hope and uh hook me up sick. Again too of course but like it's sick when you're getting like board boxes you know did Ron Allen hook you up because he saw you skating or because through the play it again? Yeah, or what? just a demo. I think it was like a, might have been a Satori demo. Some 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 demo was happening in like a parking lot and uh, talked to him and he was, you know, being all sick and Ron. I loved the Ron episode uh, oh. that you guys did. I, I was just, oh he's he's the best. In the the shit days. where he's like calling and pretending he's his own agent. Hello, it's George. Hello, it's George, and it, I'm I'm Ron Allen's manager. Couldn't believe that stuff. I mean, it's like I've heard, I've like sat and talked to him or hung out with him on the phone like so many times, and it, you're never gonna like hear a repeat story somehow. And they're always like, <laughs> they're just He's always such insane. a legend. Like, Did you kind of know who Ron Allen was to that degree at that time? No, or no, because he was. I mean, even then, he was like OG. You know, like oh damn a dude can be in his 40s and like skate street you know like he he was way before my time with, mm. with the videos that he'd been in mm -hmm. and so i didn't know his history i had to like you know get get a quick lesson on that because it was he's he's done so much um but it was cool i mean he would also just share so many stories and like give some wisdom and insight and yeah and uh yeah that like you know so i was on his company for a couple years and then i got on 510 uh that was that became like my shop sponsor and they were doing a video and it was um through through that video i started getting some like kind of bigger board brand prospects and and ron was cool with like kind of me trying to spread my wings or whatever i don't mm. know so um eventually a tape eventually i was able to give a tape to carl watson who gave it to ko and that kind of really led to like a proper like okay getting on a company that pays you and you know the whole thing so was that expedition it was gonna be or it was starting to be expedition but uh it ended up being organica so i was on organica for the for the period of time until it went under uh, okay and so that's interesting that's cool like full circle like you met carl kind of early on and yeah. then you're riding with him the, the coolest full circle of all because he was such an influence on me as as this fan you know his style his vibe his whole his whole presence and then to get to ride for his company and you know have him turn me pro was just so cool yeah what was that like was that a surprise or was it kind of like built up and you saw it coming yeah it was built up you were, you might have been at the party it's um yeah we to answer your question we had like a big you know, video drop in, like got to play a part in the graphics. It was cool. I, I was honored yeah, I mean, to be like to turn pro for Carl's company. It was part of KO. Like everything was just so exciting at that time. Did you guys travel a lot? Did you do a lot of trips and stuff with them or? So th at that point, I was like done with college and starting to do a lot of my own trips, meaning like someone would invite me to, uh, to like Thailand or, you know, like India. And I would just say yes and work out some kind of budget from sponsors and, and do it. So I had some international clips, but that was mostly just, I was living in San Francisco and I had a bunch of footage from San Diego and that was the most, the majority of that video part. Mm. Where'd you move to? Where were you living in the city? I was in Petro Hill. Ah. I was living with Dan Z. Oh yeah. Right across yeah. the street from the Cairo spot. 
exactly that turned into the everybody spot and yep. we used to give dad z shit because we're like dude you could shoot the photo from your window <laughs> dude one time josh matthews was trying feeble on it and rather than just like walking out and saying what up i got on the roof and started filming a sneaky angle and i was like so excited for him to do it and then just hit him in the email with my like sniper angle but he didn't make it that try. oh man yeah you literally could film it from the from from his spot I think that's about the time I met you, like right around probably. in that era. Yeah, probably that. Was were like you li- were you living with him when Eli stayed there? Yeah, <laughs> but I but I was on a trip when Eli was there for a while. Ah, uh, uh, damn! I heard that's one of my favorite days. stories. Desi just focusing his board. I know. I, <laughs> I just like <laughs> I tell that so many times. I wish I could have like seen it in person because I was just because uh, I I. Got, I understood it because I have been in the situation where I feel like you wanted to focus my board. He's like, <laughs> I got to go somewhere, dude. Like, if you really want to do this trick, fucking do it. You know, I don't yeah. have time for this. So <laughs> I, I like, was, I love it. Ah, uh, that's amazing. So what happened with uh, the board company? It did, it just, there wasn't enough funds or? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll i never really know, but basically KO was, was pretty, like, I feel like the budgets were spread pretty thin at one point and the focus was DGK and DGK I think had long carried most of the other brands. Mm -hmm. Um, And at one point I think it was just too hard to maintain them all and they had to plug the, pull the plug. So we, it was a very cordial like conversation leading up. Like Carl was, it was mild. We had just turned miles Silvis pro. We had actually built a pretty sick team. Josh Matthews, Eli Reed was on. We saw Quim, Adelmo, like it was happening. And Miles was like, you know, the phenom that Carl yeah. had been hooking up since he was a little 13 year old. It was like now this man pro just, and uh, yeah, it was just unfortunate timing. You know, I think mm. they just like couldn't quite, couldn't quite maintain it with the way people wanted or expected up until that point. So everyone kind of went their separate ways. Who went first? Rob Welsh or Organica? <laughs> Rob Welsh <laughs> stayed for a while, dude. Rob <laughs> Welsh hung in there. Because yeah, they, they kept they kept the expedition going for another year or two. Uh-huh. He Organica. was working at the plant for a minute. Dude, he was doing a lot. I think he was like <laughs> doing all the graphics, editing videos. Like that was a Rob I was always so surprised to see. Like when I would go into the headquarters and be like, Wait, Rob's the the guy making the uh-huh. <laughs> making the boards. Yeah. It was, and it then was cool. at 90s at the combi with Sal skating vert. You're like, who <laughs> is this guy? I'm so confused. <laughs> Woo Welsh is who I grew up loving. This is not him. What is this? I love Rob. If there's any way that we can uh, nurture him or coach him or whatever we have to do, like to get him to come on the podcast. He I said he was not. Gonna, he never made it onto yours, right? Uh, uh, he told me he's like... 69 i think he's like when i Mm -hmm. first started doing he's like i'll do 69 i was like on episode seven and i was like okay i'm gonna do 69 episodes then like i wasn't even planning to go that long and then i was like i'm good and then i got to 68 and he started having like a little anxiety or something yeah he started thinking about that cab back nose blood he's like i don't (laughs) want to do that again i can't relive it (laughs) yeah it's so funny you say that because i had listened to that I had listened to you mention that in one of your podcasts and I was like, well, that's so funny. Like has Rob never done a podcast? And then I looked and I was like, I couldn't find him on any podcast and we're doing this fitness thing. And we had a sub, we had a special episode dedicated to foam rolling and every, every, the way we're doing our podcast is it's all like skate injury related. So my friend who's a physical therapist, also a skater, skate nerd, we talk about skating and injuries and rehab like from injuries with skaters you know that's so that's like the free podcast we do and we're like dude we're going to talk about foam rolling we have to have rob welsh there's no skater (laughs) in the industry more influential when it comes to foam rolling than rob welsh and he agreed he was like oh it sounds chill and i was like no way i can't i don't want to jinx it but i think (laughs) we're gonna get him don't talk about it (laughs) i sat there with the zoom link for like two hours and he just never showed (laughs) He had like straight up agreed. I was like, I I don't want to like, I don't want to assume this is happening, but I hope it's happening. And it didn't happen. And then uh-huh. he's like, oh, sorry, something came up. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know what happened there. He's just, 
Well, his excuse is, and I think it's a modest one, but it's also probably a little anxiety driven is nobody wants to hear him talk about anything. And I'm like, quite the contrary, my friend, yeah. quite the contrary. Yeah. yeah. We mean, all want to hear it. Yeah. And so well, we're all, down, we're all begging for the woo to come through at yep. any time. I told him the door is always open. And even if it's not open it up because let's go no I, my door is closed we, we he had his chance he had his window yeah. it's shine over. me what shame on you <laughs> yeah yeah okay so then what what happened after the um organica so after organica i floated in the no sponsorship thing for a while um you put out your own part kind of not sponsored right or was I'm, that? Yeah, I'm always putting out my own parts and shit. Yeah, there was one though with Thrasher that I did because it was going to be my, it, I was had started filming for like a Circa Pro Model shoe video. So right. I'd, I'd gotten like a budget to go around some cool parts of Asia. Like we just had all this footage and I still wanted to do something with it. So that was sort of my own funded thing. Like I paid the filmers. I got the, you know, sort of the, so I, I didn't edit it. My friend Patrick Walner edited it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Thrasher put that one out, which was sick. But that was still when I was on Organica. Um, it was uh, Organica ended and then Deluxe was hooking me up with boards. And then um, I got an offer from like Sovereign to ride for their little their little program that they had going. Um, Mike Taylor and Barra. Like there was some, I don't really know. Like I still don't really know who exactly owns the company now. Um, there was like kind of a, I feel like- Does it rhyme with Eric? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not owned by the barracks, which a lot oh. of people think. Um, okay. They kind of like were running the show out of there for a little while. So that's who I'm still writing for, Sovereign. So it's like, we got a pretty small team. Um, who, who is it? We got Nate Greenwood. He's the other pro. Oh. Um, and then we got- uh this dude justin damer ben campbell we got a little am squad too um david enger and uh yeah it's cool i mean it's just like a they have like a really consistent and awesome art direction that it's mostly run by uh this filmer ryan and this photographer alex who they just kill it and it's kind of in their it's their like little passion project and they put out the videos and and all the con um, all the art direction and Right. And yeah, so that's who I've been riding for since they've been they've been hooking me up. Sick. What's up with Mikey Taylor? So Mikey's like moved into basically running like a I don't want to call it a real estate company. It's basically like an investment project. So it seems like, like he's the Tony Robbins of skateboarding. And and what's yeah. driving me crazy, and I like the guy. This yeah. isn't derogatory really, except for the fact that it's like that fucking song you can't get out of your head every time i go on instagram he's on my like oh the explorer and his poor dad would always tell him we can't afford that he robert would ask for something he'd say we can't afford that his rich dad would say never say that you can't afford something you need to tell yourself how can i afford that yeah and i'm like i like him but i i don't have really a connection to him i don't get how he, he's the big square every time whoa slow it down and wait I'm so like, like on, in your feed or in the explore the one where it's just random shit yeah yeah yeah. the yeah. explorer right yeah. yeah 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 and i'm like what did i do did i say mikey <laughs> like what are they hearing <laughs> i bet it's like i bet it's something to do with your age or demographic that you skate and like what he's doing is targeting people who are interested in you know building financial freedom and he's basically like trying to make it so that he he can share i don't want to call it like investment advice but like ways to make your money sort of work for you and like the strategies he's learned over the years which is cool mm -hmm. like so, sometimes i'm definitely like oh this is a little this is a little tick tocky or like it's it's not my like cup of tea but the information uh -huh. he's trying to put out there is like you know what kind of like investment trends are happening and and his his whole thing is like um is it has a company where if you are an accredited investor you can put money into his fund and then they make they may have like real estate projects happening and you can like get returns right. on okay your, so. yeah it's funny because uh 
Yeah. Like I said, I just go in there all the time and he he's in there and he's got his like he looks like Tony Robbins kind of <laughs> like he's just like Is that is that real? I think it's very influenced by that by that <laughs> world and that's like a uh, an Instagram entertainment world that I don't follow so I'm always like what is this but I know that it exists out there okay. in like so many ways but He's a good dude, you know. He's like no, he's a super good dude. I like him a lot, actually. He, we've spent some time. That's cool. And now another first impression with Austin Taylor Camfush. All right, I think I met Walker twelve years ago down in uh, San Diego, and we actually met the day that uh, Brandon Turner did that nolly board slide down. Patrick Henry and almost stuck it. So we were out skating with those guys and we got done skating, went back to the house that we were staying at, little skate house. And uh, Walker and our buddy Ryan Harris were just, I guess, coming down from the bay. Ryan, I think, was gonna stay at this house that I was at and Walker was probably going to stay at his apartment or at school. I don't know what the hell was going on, but uh, that's the first time that I met Walker and my, first impressions of the guy were just that he was a total motivated skate rat who was super smart, well-spoken, fun to be around, uh, always wanting to film, always stoked about making a video and like just always down to let you hop in the car and take you out skating and on spots and to the missions and yeah man, glad that I met Walker when I did because we've been skating together and kicking it ever since dude. Um, 2021, the question for 2021 is, yeah. are you more likely to be seen on TikTok or are you more likely to be seen walking down the street with a white claw? <laughs> I can fortunately say neither. The white claw is more likely just for the fact that someone might hand me one, but I <laughs> actually can't drink them. Like I, they give me crazy headaches if I have more than, uh, if I have sweet. one and like another another beverage like a beer or something like that so i'm gonna i'm gonna say neither like i still have not made a tiktok i tried to make one for my brand and i just was too overwhelmed i'm like this is this is over this is over saturation i don't even know how to take this in this yeah this stream of of media but i you know if i can I was, honestly say i've never had one i stopped drinking before it came out oh white claw yeah, and I've been on TikTok. I gotta, I, I gotta say it. I've been on there. I did an interview with Lil Dre. Nice. And then after he told me about it, I went on there and I tried to do it. And I was mm-hmm. like, this, this old guy on TikTok trying to do oh. a fucking Lil, Lil Dre dance. video was not probably. Oh, I'm glad hit. you tried though. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's it's further than I've gone with that. It's yeah. it's tough. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I I just can't. I can't get it, get into the mindset to do it. You know, I thought like, all right, I should just adapt. People are doing it. There's there's cool ways to promote some shit I'm doing, but I just I couldn't get, get yeah. there. If I was a little savvier, I would I would hire a 19 year old to to do uh, it for me for my there, for old friends. That's <laughs> what we all need. We need that intern kid that just exactly. wants to please you with all his genius. Yeah, uh, who I do natural have a- for you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, they, oh, I was born. This thing already existed. Like, yeah. and you're like, whoa. Yeah. Um, I got to ask you a question about the uh, Napa, St. Helena area. Cool. Um, I'm intrigued because I have never gone to Indian Springs. Oh. But I hear it's the best. Is there somewhere better? Well, so it's funny you say Indian Springs because that was like the it wasn't quite public but it was so affordable it was almost public for like a swimming pool that's like where i learned how to swim no way Cal- calistoga Indian it's like Springs. a natural salt water pool or something right well i don't know what it is now so i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't tell you like it used to okay. just be this like very shallow pool that was like cheap to to go swim at but i don't know what it is now and i'm mm. not dude i it's really embarrassing i've never done the, the natural the hot springs stuff like it's just a little I mean, my wife and I got a wedding gift to go to one of them, Solage. And it was like a uh, couple months, like actually like a year ago that we went and it was weird. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to finally do something that like people travel to my hometown for. But it was not what I expected. It, I thought it was going to be like a mud bath, but it was like a mud 
scrub you just like they basically oh. take some mud and you like put it on yourself and then dry mm. and then like wash it off and it was like it was a, it was an interesting spa experience but i don't know if i would repeat the the mud lather but mm. i've always been curious about mud baths which is like a thing and i've always been curious about some of these natural hot springs but i've never actually done never it in done. calistoga yeah hmm. okay so i'm not the person not the person that so you. for you if you and your wife are like we need to relax and do a getaway where's your first spot you think of in your head like are you a hawaii guy are you socal are you like some bahamas you got to get to australia I'm like what yeah what? i mean that's a good question because we're like currently in this in this position where it's like my wife works for this company in new york we moved to new york because she took a new role but they're you know it's working from home probably for the rest of the year so we're kind of like where can we go you know like where can we go where she can still work and i can still skate and do and we can be we can be content so we're looking all over the place we had our sights set on like trying to get to europe but it's just not probably not going to happen mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean we lived in la for two years almost three actually and we went to this spot in palm springs that was pretty nice for that for what you're describing this like whoa this is so chill like let's just kind of disconnect mm. and relax like but i wouldn't say we're palm springs people you know that's like yeah a little, I, can't, I can't where I can't did you do go that. for your honeymoon we went to croatia Cro so we're all oh. about like greek islands that vibe is probably like pinnacle that's okay it, you know you know cranny yeah so my fiance is mm -hmm. trying on wedding dresses today with her mom. Oh, sick. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the honeymoon. And one of my good friends, Alex Horn, happens to dabble in very fine travel with his lovely mm -hmm. wife frequently. Oh, so yep. I'm like, dude, Maldives, like, where do I go? He's like, no, 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 Greece, for sure. He's Greece. like, I got you hooked up. I uh, will fit. He's like, Greece. And I was like, Okay. I mean, I'm a Hawaii guy because it's close and I just, mm -hmm. I've never, dude, my body's, I got to talk to your friend, but my body's never felt good except for when I'm in Hawaii. Damn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause that you probably like the humidity gets you like a little yeah, more it's relaxed. The, it's the, the temperature, the so salt nice. water warm and yep. just like no stress. Like it's just, yeah. But uh, yeah, we're we're trying to think of this though. So. Yeah, that's cool. it's funny Keep... you say Croatia because I think that's kind of in the same realm. Like it's yeah, it's totally some of the sea, like the the water, the the look of these like island because there's islands and the islands are just so cool. And like we went to Greece and our lives were just changed by like how amazing the food is, the water. Like this, it's pretty affordable in some of these places. Like more le less expensive than you would imagine. Okay. When you like see a photo on Instagram, you're probably like, that's too much money. I'm not going to yeah. <laughs> But like, we, you know, you can, you can find some bougie spots, but we also like found some, you know, pretty comfortable, cheap Airbnbs and you can like, just, it's, it's amazing. So I would, I would say Greece is up, up there as like probably number one, the islands. I keep hearing this. All right, we're gonna go live just blocks away from La Seine River in Paris, France, to our old friend Walker Ryan, who's got a giveaway for you. What's going on? I'm Walker Ryan, and together with Talk and Schmidt, we're gonna do a giveaway. If you want to win a copy of my novel, Top of Mason. Not sure what the best lighting is along with a pt pack by old friends which comes when you open it up comes with a jump rope and a bunch of other stuff along with something else send an email to talking schmidt at gmail.com with the name of your favorite novel or we could do book but preferably novel and a clip of you skating and we're gonna pick a winner in two weeks. So we'll announce it June 8th and yeah, good luck. Look forward to see what you guys are reading. This week on the Grams, watching Jake Wu Wooten frontside spins a 360 into a blunt. Tanya Skate has her own blunt variations and Lucy Heller got ready for prom with a kickflip. 
And there's also Stevie going full cab and Chloe being Chloe. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf, fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Well, yep. before we dive into the book, I got to talk to you a little bit about the Ewan Bowman experience. This oh, was yes. fucking kick ass. Like Ewan <laughs> told me about it early on and I didn't understand it, obviously, because it's a little complicated. <laughs> and then as you guys start doing it, I caught and I think it came out amazing. Like, oh, what was that whole you. process? Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I I had met Ewan um, on a trip to New York. He had come to New York. I was there. Tom Remillard hit me up like, hey, we're cruising around. And, and Ewan, I was, immediately I was just, he came up and he said, he was talking to me and I was just like, this dude's energy is the best. Like, I'm, I fucking love this guy. I hope I get to film with him someday. But when I moved to LA, I just, I got this idea, like I was doing so many drives on Wilshire and seeing so many spots and just starting to kind of explore. I was like, this would be a cool concept part. You know, I was like, I mean, I've, that was probably like 12, my 12th or 14th video part or something. And I was just like, I, I can't just do the same thing again and again. Like mm -hmm. I want to try to try to pick a direction and stick to it and just see how it, see how it goes. And I was just building out this catalog and I was, I just had you in on my mind as like someone to hit up. And I just, I don't know why I just was like, I, I, Maybe he'd be, maybe he'd go for it. So I, I hit him up. He was like, yeah, let's meet up. I thought he lived pretty far away. Um, which, so it was going to be kind of difficult to manage. I thought he lived in like Huntington beach or something like that. Turned out he lived off Wilshire, literally like <laughs> one block off Wilshire in on my side of LA too, which is like LA is a, is a maze and a, and a, and a, a mess when you're trying to like <laughs> coordinate, Hey, let's just meet at this like super high bust That's spot and skate. Nicely. Like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So it worked out that he lived like just 10 minutes away on Wilshire. We could leave his house and just, tr you know, pick away at it. And so like, it took like a year and a half or, or maybe more. I mean, we would only have spurts, little spurts of time where he wasn't traveling and I wasn't traveling and we'd be in LA at the same time, but it was, it just became this like thing like, yes, dude, we have to make this happen. Like the Wilshire project. And he immediately just took to it. Like, fuck yeah dude like fuck yeah and, and yeah he was you picked so, the right guy he was always so appreciative of me like thank you for like picking me and i'm like dude you're thank you for wanting to film me you're the legend who like filmed all the videos i grew up watching like i just it was so fun to just log hours and and honestly the craziest thing about that project was realizing at the end we had only ever skated he'd only there was never like a session it was always just missions two mm. of us filming like sometimes we'd have spotters but they weren't like skating a spot with me it was like Sibo walker my friend kyle like watching for cars always just the two of us he filmed every single clip and i've never had that with a video project before where it was just like only the two of us making it happen and it was a lot of work and his motivation and dedication like 100 percent made it happen because he was down to skate a spot at like six in the morning which a lot of filmers would be like dude I'm trying to chill today it's sunday like i got this is my mood morning at least yeah but not you and he's just down for it so it was so for people that so for people that don't know it was basically the concept was you're skating down wilshire and hitting shit all the way through yeah it was just i gave myself a parameter of like the only spots we could skate were the ones like a block with within a block radius of wilshire boulevard and Wilshire Boulevard in, in Los Angeles starts at the Santa Monica Beach, like right there on Ocean, and goes right into the thick of downtown. And it's the only street that like really go is is like urban the whole way. It doesn't like turn into like a golf course stretch for miles or it doesn't it like it goes through all the many of the major towns that you think of in LA, like mm -hmm. Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, like Century City, like downtown LA, Koreatown, they're all in Wilshire. And I mean, just the name Wilshire skaters know because of all the, you know, like the 15 stair and, and Jay Kwan and like, there's so much cool history there. Right. That I just thought it'd be like a no brainer 
film at famous spots, but also just explore in ways that people haven't taken the time to do. Mm. And then, and yeah, like that was, that was the whole idea. And it was just fun, hard, but fun. So from the beginning, this is the question I have. Did you kind of have it all mapped out already? Like we're going to start at this time of the day, skate these spots and gradually go through and and even to the point that did you know what tricks you were going to do where or did it kind of just evolve on the fly more so like oh that was sick i got that maybe i can do this next time or how did yeah, it go to- total combination i mean i i had like a list of you know 50 spots that we could skate and but i you know it would take like, all right, getting there and be like, you know what? This isn't really a spot. Like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> but look, across the street, there's this, like, little bump over thing. Like, what do we, what do we, why don't we skate that? You know, so that's how it would go. It'd be okay. like, I would have the guide of, like, my ideas. And the ideas rarely came to fruition because they were like, it's just, you know, I'm skating in, in my imagination. And then I get, you get there and you're like, oh, sorry, dude, <laughs> this is going to happen. But uh-huh. because we were just, like, so focused on only skating spots that were off Wilshire, it just opened up the mindset of like, no, let's try something here. Whereas like, you know how it goes with spots, like even in the city or anywhere, you're just like, is this a skate spot? Okay. Like it's a bust. Let's move to the next skate spot rather than like, let's just really just try to skate anything in this area, you know? So it, was, it made it, it made it fun. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of shit I didn't get because we would just, it was, these are, super heavily guarded security building yeah you know such a bust and some were just these beautiful spots that we could never get more than five minutes at or or i could never get a trick that was like worthy for a part you know i could like get something quick but not something good so right there's a lot that like didn't go down but it was it was cool i'm psyched on the way it yeah no and it's such a cool idea um it, it, I thought it came together rad it, it was Thanks. cool for me to just have that perspective too because you and shared with me kind of the beginning stages of the idea when it wasn't real. And then I saw it evolve and then saw the final and I'm yep. like, you guys crushed it. That was killer. Yeah. 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 And it was cool. We got to use a Ray Barbie song too. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh man. Um, okay. How do you become an author? Did, what, did you graduate from college with a degree in writing? Have you done journals? Like what, what's your background in writing? Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I've always just been a, a reader from a family of readers, but I'm also from a family of writers. Like my grandmother was a, a, is a novelist. Like that was her entire career. I knew my mom wrote books or oh. she wrote novels. She never like got them published, but my dad was always writing something. So it was just, you know, it was like a normal thing that I grew up thinking like, I don't know, it was normal. And so I didn't go to school for writing. I mean, I definitely took some, classes but it wasn't like my focus or it was never like something I was set on doing it was just a while after college that I I feel like I just started reading for fun a lot more in college like you're just sort of overwhelmed by books you have to read for your classes that it's hard to find any time to read anything for fun and I just got more into reading fiction and I just started thinking about an idea that that could involve skating and so I just I don't know I just basically dove in one day started t- trying it and just kind of stuck with it and the you know in the same way you just sort of stick with a video part you're like all right yeah. i got two tricks but i want a part might take three years but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna stick with it so, well, so that's you, kind of the story of a. Uh, you did it man that's but dude what do you what do you think i'm i'm super curious you're, you're i'm psyched because you're the first person i've done a little like interview with who's actually read it so i'm psyched. well it's the first book I've read in 2021 and I yeah, literally honored. saved the final chapter for today. So I just finished it Sick. and I got to be honest, I'm not a reader really. Like, I, th- I don't know. I always say this, but I've read a lot of books. I- I've lived a lot of years. So yeah. if I read 50 books, that's only one a year, <laughs> you <laughs> so know, though, but, yeah. uh, No, I thought it was cool, man. Um, What I would say, um, one of the first things I would say is I was talking to my friend Evan Becker and he's like, you got to tell him that that's a that's a compliment. And um, what I would say is it kept my attention. I I I don't read big chunks and I read slowly. So that whole process takes 
I love a book that has small chapters, which yours yep. did. And um, of course, skateboarding in San Francisco is kind of a no brainer, right? Yeah. Um, I do have to admit that I kind of saw the dev development. Oh, nice. Uh, I kind of saw that coming. I kind of in the back of my mind, I don't know why or how, but my fiance is really good. At, she's an insane reader and mm -hmm. she will watch TV shows and she'll already know the whole thing. Like yep. within the first half hour, she'll be like, oh, we don't need to watch this series because it's da, da, da. You're like, could you just turn your brain off for a second? <laughs> but uh, she's helped me kind of like see how constructing. Yeah. Um, no, but really cool, dude. And more so congratulations on just writing a book. It seems like, I mean, anyone could do it, but not anyone can get one published and then have people read it and admire it. And I think there was some, there was a couple issues I had. There was like a minor, I think you called Oracle Park AT&T, which we're going to let slide because I didn't Ooh. know when you wrote it. So <laughs> there was like that. <laughs> yes, I need, but, uh, I need a couple of those like extra, extra yeah. in the streets fact checking. Yeah. But I'm wondering how long did it take you to complete from beginning to end? Yeah, so I, st I started the idea i started working on the idea in like 2014 i want to say okay and then it was basically like 2017 that it was like all right this is done and then i just showed it to people you know got it uh got notes feedback all right what do you think all right worked on it, it just basically revised and edited it for like three more years basically so does your family since they kind of did that kind of stuff do they have connections of people that you can hand it to that are going to give you solid advice to like kind of tighten it up or did you no, just I mean, do honestly it was mostly my family and family friends who who helped with that kind of stuff okay and, um and like i should say like i didn't get I didn't get this properly published. Like this is a self publishing thing. I'm basically printing it and selling it like a zine, you know, oh, um, no way. but I did. Yeah, no. So it was, it's, I did get it like professionally copy edited. So it was clean and like made, you know, a lot of people put eyes on it and like gave them checks, but yeah, no, I didn't get like a publisher to put it out. I've just, I just did it myself through, through old friends. Um, but hey, dude. Yeah, so it's just been a very DIY project from start to finish, which ma which makes it fun. You know, there's like a there's a big like gatekeeping thing that happens in in publishing, and I really don't have connections to that world or even like a resume as a writer. You know, like I don't get short stories published. I don't do the things that I feel like a lot of people do to to build up the name for a publisher to kind of take you on. Mm. But I wrote this thing, and I just thought like. This, we live in a day and age where you can just put things out like they make, there's companies that make it so easy for you to do that and the quality is still pretty solid so i just barged it and i'm really i'm really happy that i did because it it uh it's been an empowering thing to have so many people be willing to support purchase it and so many people are telling me that they're just reading it really fast and like you know a lot of people saying like what you said that it kept their that they were engaged in like a book, you know, you don't have to always just like love a book, but if you can even finish it, like that's a huge, that that's a hard thing to do. Like I, I pick up a lot of books that I just like trudge through, like, oh, like I don't want to finish this. I'm just not interested. Are and you, so, but will, are you the type of person that once you start, you have to finish it or will you just put it away and say, I'm not going to read this? Usually there's a few that I just like, well, give up on because it just I'm halfway through and I'm realizing I just don't care at all yeah um so it it, it happens but I usually I usually just have to finish it um, I, this is probably a really tough question but do you have like a top three of books of all time that you've read fiction wise that like yeah I mean it's like it's like asking your favorite skater you know it'll change day to day um huh. off the top of my head I would always I would always recommend people read East of Eden I think that is like a Steinbeck book that everyone should read. John Irving is a fantastic author. They're they're dense books and they're hard to get to, but he's so funny. Mm. Easier reads. There's this author Tom Perota who I really I really like. He writes a lot of books that um that 
become pretty well known like HBO shows and things like that. Like he wrote that the book that became the show The Leftovers. Did you see that oh, one? Oh yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. So that's like a ba- based on a really cool novel. He also wrote Mrs. Fletcher, which was another HBO series that came out and uh he's all his books are great. So I'll I'll, I'll leave it at those three. I got Kurt Vonnegut, Tom Robbins and who wrote Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? Why am I blank? Tom Mark Twain? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That's my top three. Cool. Good I'm answers. Lo- I gotta um, I gotta jump back into the Huck Finn. That's Huck, I I love Huck Finn. Yeah. I haven't really read Steinbeck too much. Mm, I think I, would, I read one of his books ever, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I need to, I mean he's local. Like yeah. you go down to Cannery Row, you know, you're in Monterey, yep. like it's like, I don't know, the yeah, history's exactly. red. So I got some specifics about the book I want to ask you. Let's go into it, dude. I love this. Yeah. Okay. Uh there's this character named Gary. Yeah. Right? How much wheat berry influence? You know, I don't really know wheat berry. I feel like <laughs> I feel like there's a tiny bit solely because of, you know, like his presence at at skate parks like Soma and stuff. Like he's uh-huh. definitely pun- he definitely punched out one of my friends who was just happened to be at Soma <laughs> one day. <laughs> so like but I don't have oh, too no, much personal. Yeah. <laughs> just like a run by a drive by drive by sock. Um but really it's it's you know it's a combination of of characters and people I've known in my in my life. You know, people who've had some some serious bouts with addiction who've sort of entered that world in the tenderloin that is um i mean on you know on one hand like so devastating and sad but on the other hand so intriguing and fascinating like how does that world work when you're sort of in it hustling like the the gary character so it was definitely a composite like wheatberry is more of a <laughs> i, I want to say like a coincidence because i don't really like have that much like i know he's he's a big part of san francisco scene but like my first hand encounters aren't huge aren't like sure. too paired with him um but it is you know that's like a, a a situation that's similar yeah um but yeah i mean it's just sort of imagining like a skater who was almost pro who you know got basically hooked on a bunch of drugs and just is is now loving and and it's weird to say this, but sort of like enjoying the city hustle of like the tenderloin, which can which can happen. And I've seen I've seen happen to people. I know. Yeah. So would you say, is it fair to say that most of the references you're using were kind of you've lived vicariously through those or had you had some of those personally? No, I those mean, are a lot drugs. of stories told to me. Yeah. Okay. A lot of like stories from from friends who've been through it who were who were willing to share and then who were will a lot like basically allowed me to put it into the story and I would talk to them like, hey, like I have this storyline and it kind of involves a character who's been through these experiences. Like, would you read it? Would you let me know what you what you think if you're comfortable mm-hmm. with me putting it out there? And that that sort of uh, feedback to keep it keep it rooted in some truth because it's not a world um, or a set of experiences that I've had personally, you know. Okay. And and you've been married for how long? I got married in 2019. So about a year and a half. So without getting a divorce, did you have some tough relationships prior to her that broke your heart? I mean, we all have, I'm, I'm the, guessing, unless she's your childhood sweetheart, but uh, no, yeah. Like, like um, any, some of that know. stuff I thought was pretty like, on point <laughs> you could yeah i mean with we've the all in and the ex you know the longest relationship uh the guy had ever had and how he was just dwelling on that same person and all those things i was like this is it felt really real yeah well I, i'm glad i mean that's definitely you know a combination of my experiences in 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 heartbreak and loss and relationships and then seeing my friends go through stuff and just sort of knowing that pain and and seeing the kind of delusion of thinking it can always work out again. And and that was definitely the motivation for the character, you know, for Henry. Have, have you ever walked in on your girlfriend getting body shots? <laughs> I haven't, fortunately, but I'm glad the horror of that sort of scene <laughs> remains vivid in your head. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Then I was like, okay, Tubsy, code for fat back. Check! 
All right, we got that one. I'm like, Underwood, code for Thrasher. Check! Because Thrasher's on Underwood. Like, yeah, I was I like, like putting in little nuggets, you know. Even yeah, though, dude. You know, I wanted, the, I wanted the skate media or like, and the, like the live characters in the book to, to all be fictional, but you know, like have like little, little realms of truth. Like uh, there was, I mean, it's funny too, because so much has changed since I like initially started writing it or not changed, but like, you know, in 2014, 2015, when I sort of like outlined the, the story idea, um, the skate world has changed. You know what I mean? Like there's things like that. Like I, I, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to, to see people's reactions and what they think I meant, you know, by things. So, yeah, it's probably, it's like it writing music, like your favorite song, the way you interpret it. And then you finally meet the performer and they're like, I, just <laughs> I remember asking Jay Maskus about this song that I, and he was like, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I was like, oh. Um, yeah. One of the questions I had for you, you kind of answered, I think. Um, there's this part that I actually talked to my fiance about, an important part of skateboarding, which is learning how not to kook it, right? It's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm guessing that Billy Pepper incident kind of was your like learning not to kook it situation, totally. maybe. Um, I remember early on for me, it was like, beaming was so faux pas right you're yep. like do not look around to see who saw you make your shit you know yep. um and those little things are things that skaters i think they kind of have to explain it to an ordinary person because they're like what do you mean and you're like yeah. these are just kind of like unsaid rules that are like you can't kook it otherwise you're a kook and you don't right. want to be a kook <laughs> um i thought that that stuff was really important that it was in there um the cool. nampa i'm guessing was kind of a nod to napa yeah yeah that was just kind of to, to have fun with that yeah and uh <laughs> the cardiel rail experience i thought was uh, a highlight oh, yeah. for me because i scene? was like wait what trick was he trying to do 5-0 right was it a back 5-0 maybe Front 5-0. Five front 5-0. And I'm like, who's got okay. it? <laughs> hmm. I've seen some dudes take some horrendous slams on that fucking rail. Seriously. Yeah. So, um, no, it was cool. And like, it was like, uh, there was a lot of nods to different things, like the nod to the OG. Like, that was cool, you know, being an older guy and like, just kind of seeing that like the younger guy would respect this guy enough to be like, nah, dude, you are my influence. You're always down with me. Like, and all that stuff. I, I really liked it. Uh, the Harry Potter stuff. Are you a Harry Potter fan or did that just work its way in? Yeah. I mean, I feel like it kind of worked its way in. Like, it's funny you say that. Cause I remember being at a, at a bar, it was on a skate trip and these like skaters were like trying to talk to these girls and someone just realized, like, I, I don't know, you know, it's always awkward when you're, like, making small talk. And I just heard him say, like, you like Harry Potter? Or, like, you <laughs> fuck with Harry Potter? And, like, just, it was just so funny to me that it, like, then basically, like, turned into this, like, passionate conversation about Harry Potter. And, like, I think Harry Potter just touches on so many people of my generation, basically, like, 30, 32, 33 and under, mm -hmm. have all had it harry potter influences most likely either their parents read it to them Spent they got the into a couple at borders books. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i definitely read um the first five books as oh. a kid and i was it was actually a big problem moving get moving forward with my relationship with whitney who I, my wife she almost wouldn't marry me until i i had read six and seven. Oh, you had to finish <laughs> it off <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, so that's just little little nuggets in there that I just thought it, they're not necessarily me like I'm not the person I, I don't read Harry Potter every year for fun but a lot of people do like that remains like a comfort book for them mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what I wanted Henry to to be you know like just have that as a part of it but yeah it's funny you, you got no one's asked me that yet and it's it was really just like how funny it was being on this trip and watching this conversation go between I won't name the skater, but like the skater and this girl, they're just like talking about Harry Potter. Like That's your so pickup line. I just thought it was amazing. 
Yeah. Oh man. Um, have you gotten any like weird beef or negative feedback from somebody that like, I don't know, somebody was bummed that you were talking about this and you, I don't know anything like that. No, I haven't, I haven't gotten anything like that. And I'm, I, I you know, I kind of expect it and, yeah, because we're in a very critical world where people like to hate or I've yeah. been talking about schadenfreude for the last year and a half, how a lot of people seem to really take pleasure in other people's downfalls, which mm -hmm. is weird, but that's been trendy. As I was reading it, I was like, because I know you pretty well, and I'm just like, this dude's never smoked crack. I'm pretty sure this dude's yeah. never smoked crack. <laughs> so is somebody going to come at him like, what you writing about crack for? You know, you don't know. Or like, I don't know. I was trying to envision where the hate, if there was any hate would come from, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, yeah. I was. And just, you know, a big part of the story is like gnarly hill bombs and I'm not the gnarly hill bomb guy, you know? Right. And like what's been really crazy is gnarly hill bombs guy telling me like dude i couldn't put it down it's like i've had those thoughts <laughs> like, I'm like whoa rules. okay cool like that that's really comforting to hear that like that mindset i was able to capture a little bit because i don't quite share it like uh -huh. what i what i say is it, it's like i'm not you know in this book i'm writing about some of my biggest fears and just imagining them being experienced through a character who is similar to people i know you know okay. so it's like I'm scared of the psycho hill bombs like Mason down, you know, straight bomb, no power slides. I'm scared of doing hard drugs and, and crack and all those things and, sure. and, and those relationships that, you know, break your heart and crush you. Like those are, I'm a, I'm a more cautious, like guarded person kind of. And I just, I wanted to write a story about a character that was not those things. And, you know, the feedback I'm getting, which is so comforting and like, relieving because I was nervous putting it out you know it's like you put out so much of yourself and it's you don't know what people are gonna how they're gonna respond and like the fact that people are reading it and saying like damn like I find this really relatable I'm like okay whew, phew like that's cool like that's what I wanted you know I wanted it to be a story that because my whole my whole goal was like I've never read a book or even seen a movie really for that matter that I, I think captures our weird little industry in a way that's authentic you know in a way that in a way that's like, all right, this character is a skateboarder, but this is not a story about like making the team and like getting the gold. And you know, it's just, it's, it's yeah. that rad, thrashing, cool. right. yeah. the cube. So, like. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted it to be context for like a, you know, a story about a, a kind of a sad lost guy going through a, a rough patch, you know? Was there a conscious effort for you to like, there was some dabbling in like names like, oh, the Cairo rail or something like that. Was it a conscious effort for you to not overdo that, to not be like, oh, the Muska rail, the, but yeah. to have a few in there? Because that felt to me the perfect uh, blend of you like, there was a balance. This, is yeah. a fic this is a fiction book, but we're throwing in some nonfiction. Like, yeah. you know, some of these things that people can identify with, like, you know. Yeah, it was it was a ch it was a challenge actually because at first I was like I just want it to be all fiction, you know. I want this to be its own little universe. But I don't know. I just I I kept thinking like there's no way to describe this spot without the history that is is real, you know. So I kind of wanted to make like a parallel universe, you know, or like a divergence. It's like all right, in 2010 something changed and you know like that's what we're working from, but that old history is shared you know like the 90s and early 2000s right. is shared so there's like it's rooted in in something people can relate to and it has people have told me it's it's it was distracting for them you know it's like you're in this you're in this fictional world and then all of a sudden i'm talking about the line mike carroll did and it's like what or i'm mentioning you know like skates like grant taylor or raven and they're like what like that's so i i just wanted there to be the blend because i felt like it was easiest to keep it rooted in in what like skaters will know and if a non-skater reads it, they can maybe Google that or they can like look into it. And right. It was really interesting. Like with the copy editor, she knew nothing about skating, but she was very thorough with making sure everything like uh, was accurate, you know? And so like she'd look up every single name I mentioned and she would even say like, 
are you sure you want to call this the Cardiel rail? Because there's another Cardiel rail that was taken out in 2014. And like, <laughs> people might think it's confusing. And I was like, damn, you're killing it. Damn, like, Levi's. Like, yeah, you're right. There are two. But so, so it was, it was a weird, it was, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough decision that I, that I still to this day, I'm a little like, how is it? Cause I, you know, there's mm. a, it's a fake magazine. It's a fake shoe brand. It's a, it's, it's a fake sh- corporate shoe brand. It's a fake set of, uh, mm-hmm. but there is like some shared history. So. I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was the perfect little sprinkle. You know, I think if you did it more, it might've been what your anxieties are, but, um, I think yeah. just have it. And like the nods were the right people too, like cool. Cardiel, Mike Carroll, you know, I mean, yeah. come on. Like let if we're gonna mention anyone, it's like those are the dudes. So it was, I thought it was really well done. What's that process like when you hand off the book to the copy editor? Are you just fucking a nervous wreck? And how long does it take till you hear back from them? Yeah, I it was like the last. It was like the first time I've turned in a paper in a long time. You know, it's been, I've, I haven't been in school in like ten years, and that's what it felt like. Like, what's uh-huh. my grade gonna be? Because I'd read that thing so many fucking times. I was like, this is gonna be clean. This is, she's gonna be like, hey, I didn't. Basically, I didn't even need to edit this, and I was. I got an F. It had <laughs> so many errors. There was probably like thirty four hundred comments. It was. It was. It was insane. But it would. It would be you know grammatical things like. I didn't put the spaces right in the dot, dot, dots. So there's like, mm. that's a couple hundred comments. And there's, there was a lot of little things, but it took like six weeks, I think. So it's definitely like twiddling my thumbs, like waiting, like, all right. Cause that was a step I needed to do, you know? <laughs> oh. Yeah. And, and I can't remember, did this come out in the pandemic or before the pandemic? I put it out early December. So just a couple months ago. Yeah. Okay. So during like right yeah. in the, okay. Yeah. yeah fuck dude that's that cool well sick dude I, I, i'm you inspired me to read if nothing else like okay. i'm not a guy that does that my next book i think is gonna be this jim carrey book i've been hearing about i've heard a lot of good things and he basically did an extreme version of what you're talking about which is take a non-fiction world and make it fiction and so the reader never knows when it's real or not. So he can cool. talk shit about like real people, but it's a <laughs> fiction book. Hands <laughs> off. I was like, that is the answer for 2020. Cool. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> well, that's just a funny thing with even this book. I, I just wonder if people are like reading too much into it. Like, oh, is that who he's talking about? Is it that person? This and that. And it's just like, dude, it's just fiction. Like they're, they're composite characters. It's not... There's some, there's obviously some, some commentary on, on our industry, but like, it's not, you know, people need to listen for fun. People need to lighten up a little bit. Um, what's up with the podcast? It's, uh, old friends catch up. Yeah. It's your friend is Dr. Kyle Brown. Yep. And you guys each episode talk about either an injury or health or some way to prevent like that kind of vibe. Yeah. So he's, you know, he gets hit. He has a, he's a physical therapist and a skater and, you know, skaters have found his Instagram and just like, they just hit him up constantly with questions. Like Is he I have North. This, he's from Calistoga. We grew up together, but he okay. lives, he, his clinic is in Santa Monica. So he's in oh, LA. Okay. So basically he just gets constantly hit up with questions And it's just too much for him to manage. Like he can't quite, you know, he can't DM every skater. But a lot of the conditions that are most common for skaters, it's a pretty straightforward rehab process. And so what he wanted was some platform to make like thorough, thoroughly explained videos for rehab programs and discussions about those programs or those injuries. And so every, so that's what this is. We just, we did it together. I get to be the, I mean, I'm producing and editing them, but I'm, but I'm playing the role of like the skater who doesn't know anything. Hey, explain it to me. Hey, how, how does static stretching work? How does an ankle sprain heal? Like how, how does Achilles tendinopathy occur? You know? So it's like every month we pick a new topic and then we have a podcast, a video about it. And we tie in, pro skaters who've been through some of these right these injuries. have you guys touched on arthritis well not 
like osteoarthritis or uh any because we, we yeah. haven't to answer your question okay. we haven't so far we've we've done patellofemoral pain which is like kneecap pain we've done ankle sprains we've done achilles tendinopathy we just did plantar fasciitis have you ever had that Mm-mm. it's like a heel pain thing arch your foot thing is it like and a so, hot pocket no it's different it's like overuse injuries mm. so it's a lot of it's a lot of those injuries that like especially like up 30 and up but even you know like i feel like 25 and up is like an old man in skateboarding but you just start to get these things you know and you're like what the fuck is it it's taking two months and i'm not skating still like what do i do and in his practice as a physical therapist it's a lot of at home stuff you know it just do these calf raises do this stretch this way and so we make a video that explains like how to do those exercises and then we discuss it and so it's it's cool yeah, is, is he down for supplements and homeopathics or is he more like a utilize your body type? Definitely a utilize your body and stretch correctly, strengthen. He's big on strengthening. So most of the stuff we do will come with like a program that is strengthening a certain part of your body that will like complement the injured area. So. All right. How long do you think you're going to go? Well, we have, we just filmed a new batch. So I have like 10 months of content to edit. So that's kind of what I'm doing most of the time is just editing these videos and and these little podcasts. So I got to go at least another 10 months, but hopefully we'll film another batch. I mean, ideally, you know, we want to build a catalog that someone could subscribe to and just be like, all right, yeah, I kind of have this thing. I want to work on it. I kind of want to work on some strengthening. I kind of want to learn about foam rolling. And we'll just sort of always be expanding that catalog. Red, and so the, the free podcast we do, like our last guest was Corey Duffel, which was tight because we were focusing on plantar fasciitis and he had like a crazy plantar, in, plantar fascia injury. I had injury. 43 yeah. surgeries. <laughs> <laughs> he could talk for, you, we could have had him on for 10 hours to talk about injuries. Yeah. But uh, um, yeah, and then we had, so bef- and then we had Dave Abair who talked about this like insane like jumping out of a window, busting his heel. And that Dude, kind of the hill in. bomb slam he took was oh my so gnar. <laughs> Fuck. Dave Avar's a nut. He's the man. I love uh, him. You've probably uh, been on some sessions with him, right? Back, uh, back, but yeah. not in a while. I got, sorry, Dave, but last time I saw you, you were so blackout drunk in the back of a car. Me and, and you're like, I'm being... never going to hang out with you again. Dude, he's like, ah! <laughs> and then the, actually I saw him one time after that. And apparently he said he was sober. So I was like, good for you, man. Yep. But uh, no, I love Dave. He's a rad yeah. dude. He's, he's one guy who read the book who was like, all right, dude, kind of nailed it. You kind of, you got some of that stuff, right. You know, <laughs> sick dude. Do you think there's going to be, um, an audio version? Yeah, I'm actually working on on getting a getting that produced right now. No way. It's kind of cool. Yeah. So Wow. I'm hoping that I'm not sure when that will be ready, but that will be really exciting. Are too. you going to have different people reading it or one person read it or what? I'll have one voice actor doing will it. Will it be you or someone no, else? No, no, I'm not qualified to do that kind of that uh-huh. kind of work. Fortunately, I have a really good friend. I don't want to put him on blast yet in case he doesn't finish it cuz like like all the things I'm doing with Who this else? Guy, <laughs> <laughs> like all the things i'm doing with this book it's just very diy incorporating friends um but he's excited and he started he started recording it so i'm i'm really hoping that uh it comes together sh- shortly and i can we can we can put it out and share it let me know dude and um just a tip for you i don't, I don't know if you're in tune with the kindle but a lot of people hate on it and the mm-hmm. one thing i would say is when you get older and you start needing to wear these the Kindle can enlarge the font and yep. that's this that's the game changer for me. That's totally I, I don't I love holding the book and I get it. I'm a vinyl dude. I got records out the I got so many records and I love books and yeah. the trophyism of it all, right? Like I read that and there's my yep. bookcase, uh, you know. But the Kindle in this modern era for me has made it and dude, you go to Hawaii, you can bring 50 books in this oh, yeah. small, thin thing. So and that's when you want to read, you know, when you're on the, when you're on the beach. Yeah. And that's like, that's like my number one favorite type of book. And that's what I wanted to write. Like I, this was not like a, you know, a dense literary thing. I wanted to write something that you could read on, read on the beach on a Kindle. And it is actually available on Kindle. I have made it 
so you can you can you can download it and now he tells me what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> no you needed that one for the shelf dude you needed the trophy <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, this is going on the shelf for sure. Have you read Scott Bourne or uh, who's the other the guy? Fucking Nate Sherwood. Selling skateboards, not trends, since 2012. Edge of Skateboard Shop is low skated here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. If you need anything, come see us in person because we don't do any of that online bullshit. Because I put some comment. I was like, I'm going to have Walker on to talk about the book. He's like, I wrote books too. Have me on. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you read any of these other skater stuff? Yeah. So I have read one of Nate Sherwood's books, actually. He wrote this <laughs> little short novel that it was like, I think technically a novella that was pretty fun. I liked it. It didn't have anything to do with skating. It was like a totally different type of book but it was good um i can't get a i've tried to get a copy of scott Bourne's book but they're like Same. far between i saw one for like 200 bucks and i was like uh, i don't know oh, really i think <laughs> like toad on, has on one and i was thinking about borrowing it just to read it i think that that's schmitting but uh cool. yeah i've been looking i can't find them i really want to read it because it's also a san francisco story it all it doesn't have anything to do with skating apparently it's just like yeah his kind of adventures and but it, actually it does it does. It, well, like, there's some people involved that are kind of like what we talked about. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, wait, is that Hansi Driscoll? Oh, true, true. <laughs> you know, like, I don't think it's Hansi, but I'm just saying, like, might speaking be somebody. Of, speaking of him, he gave me a free set of wheels at Santa Rosa Park back when I was a little kid. What a ruler. Not so much give it to me, but like, hey, dude, looks like you need some wheels. I left some in the, in the grass outside the park if you want some. And I took them and I'm like, oh, my God, these are like brand new. Were they <laughs> adrenaline? I don't know. I mean, they were used, you know, but oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that feeling of like, damn, free stuff from a pro. Like, you just influenced somebody. All right. Well, I got this okay. thing that I just came up with. Like Jake Phelps, he used to always say fucking Kyle Walker Ryan, Kyle Walker Ryan, Kyle Walker Ryan. <laughs> Today I took it to the next extreme and I'm oh, saying shit. Kyle Walker, Ryan, Spencer, Hamilton. Beat that <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that was going to be rolling in his grave, dude. <laughs> yes. What dude. do you think Jake would have thought of the book? Would it, would it, be, would it have been too soft? <laughs> he would have, he's not in it. It sucks. <laughs> Here's the formula for Jake to appreciate something. Every 15 pages, just put his name in there and then it's the best <laughs> shit ever. Ta-da. Shit happens like that. I pay attention. Right, even if cool. it doesn't even matter, it's like, now I don't know. He might. Here's the thing with Jake too. The minute you think you know the answer, nope. He'll you know. just, yeah. he'll be friends with the biggest kook ever. He'll, he'll go eat some, like, you're like, I got you figured out. And you never do. That's I what that. was so yeah. great about him. I just do that. I miss the fucking dude so much. It's gnarly. I like go I to work and luckily, you know, we've had a year off with this uh, pandemic. I've been working from home, but like, right. I just go, I've been in there five or a handful of times. And each time you go in there, I mean, his office still has all his stuff in there and you're just like, uh, it's, wow. it's really heavy. hard to say or work or do anything with the word thrasher without having Jake in your mind. And, uh, I'm, I remember it always like it's like yeah. I fucking live it. It's crazy. But yeah. uh, well, you're I, all these deaths, dude. I, I'm not down for the trends like, no, holy shit. This kid Angel just died like what, two or three days ago. I didn't know him, know him, mm -hmm. but he was friends with like all those fucking dudes, you know, that. Uh, and then Mark Water, I don't know. We could go. Yeah. I don't want to it's, end on such a negative note, but the death thing has been like super heavy and it's I just know. sad, especially when you can't even go to a funeral or a hospital and, and touch know. people and, and, hug, and hug, 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 hug your friends when you, that's kind of sometimes all you need after a loss like that. You know, it's just that, right. that shared moment. So it's really, you know, I can't, I don't even know what to say to anyone out there. This, who's who's lost someone this past year? It just I can't even imagine. What kind of what kind of song should we throw on the jukebox to fucking skate down? Fucking, we're gonna go yeah, Jones. Keep... We're gonna skip Mason and go to Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mason's is too. Have you have you since since reading it look, looked up at the top of that? Thing I went there because I was thinking about doing the intro. Like, oh, <laughs> you gotta do it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's 
fucked. I don't like train tracks. Like if I'm mm -hmm. skating down a hill and I see those kind of things, I feel like I'm going to die for sure. Yeah. No, so. I know. It's, it's, it's just one of those that like I, I, and it was funny before I put it out because I had to, if there were little comments in there that I wanted to keep like somewhat truthful, you know, like if, if someone had, had or hadn't done it, like I called Frank because I was like, Frank, like, has anyone done Mason? And he called me back or I texted him and he called me back. He's like, so if you want to do it, here's what you're going to, I'm like, no, 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 like, I don't want to do it. Like, I'm just, I'm just wondering if you know. How about many it. times has he got that call? Frank, yeah. <laughs> I'm on Jones. Do I go to the left or the right at the third? Oh, mama. <laughs> yeah. And then I hit up Garcelle because he was like, you should hit up, you should hit up Ryan C. And, and he was like, it was, it was honestly kind of weird because he was like, why are you claiming it? I was like, no, no, no. Again, like, I'm not trying to do it. I just want to know. I'm writing this story. He's like, Pablo has this idea. And I was like, oh, shit. And then it was, you know, like, of course, it's just Pablo passed. And so I wanted to, like, then, you know, somehow, because Pablo would probably be, would be the dude to have, like, done a trick and then taken the whole hill or something. But uh, it ended up coming down to this kid, Shogo, from Japan, who apparently had done it and it was on Instagram. And then everyone was like bouncing me around to like different people who may or may not have filmed it, may or may not have seen it. And then eventually this kid, I connected with him and he was like, which hill? I don't know. And I, I sent him a photo from the top and he's like, oh yeah, very fun bomb. Like spelled it funny, all funny. And it was, it was actually a really weird conversation because he didn't really understand what I was asking. I don't think he speaks very good English. So it was like this sort of, it, it was just so much miscommunication. And wow. then he sent me the video and he, he did it, but he kind of power slid down the whole first, uh, first hill, but he okay. took Mason from the top. So oh, I got to awesome. see that. Go, dude. Sick, dude. <laughs> That's pretty rad. Yeah. Wow. It was cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's end with, uh, my, my song of the summer, dude. I was listening to this bill, bill withers, RIP sweet Winomi. All right. Cool. That's the jam. It and made, then it just brings me to like a good, good happy spot i was always such a bill withers fan somehow i missed that song in like my childhood listening and like i just i listened to it all summer and it still gets me hyped well dude thanks for spending the time congratulations on the book and your life seems fucking kick-ass i mean it could be worse than being stuck in bolinas you know <laughs> no, i'm telling very, you if you get fortunate. bored which i don't think you're gonna it seems like you got a lot going on but if you are and you got like a little itch to test your abilities to try something new just fucking paddle out dude i know Bring your GoPro, put it on your forehead, get the <laughs> selfie stick out, just kook it completely. I know. I can just be that kook, you know, <laughs> yeah. like I, I hear it for, for how hard of an edge Bolinas can have as a town, you know, like they're very like they they fully for those of people who don't know, like I probably shouldn't even be mentioning Bolinas this much because the locals would be like, fuck you, <laughs> blowing a spot. Um, but they used to tear straight up, tear out the signs. So there was, you would never see a sign on any state road that said Bolinas. You better leave this shit in here. Don't be telling this is negative or not. This is life. So the state just stopped. It's not signs. easy to find. Well, they, and they kept, you know, they, they maintained that, that uh, exclusivity. But, uh, they, you know, they would spray paint tourists go home and like with arrows. Uh -huh. They just hate it. But I've heard that the vibe on the, on the wave is actually pretty friendly and people are nice, which I would okay. not expect. Yeah. It's kind of a beginner spot. So yeah. I think it tends to not be so local. Um, once you get attitude, you're usually better. So you go to, to better places. Exactly. The skate park's not bad either. It's fun. Oh, I love the park. And they just, they just added some smaller noping little, like they've added some stuff to it. <laughs> yeah, again, it sucks. Just kidding, <laughs> Don't come. <laughs> but it's so fun. Yeah. So oh, I'm, fuck, I'm, dude. I'm having a good, good little California stint, avoiding the cold in New York for now. So it's good. Yeah. Well, good catching up. Um, dude, thanks for having me on. And, and most importantly, thank you for taking the time with the book, dude. And, and oh, supporting yeah. it. It, means, it means the world when people like you, you know, take the time with it and, and want to chat. It like really humbles me and gets me hype. We got Tony V on deck. I think, you know, a review from Tony V oh, will yeah. be a good one. Hell yeah. um, how am I going to follow up? Who's my next guest to follow you up? How, how do I keep the bar ra ra raised? Who would you, well, you who would it. you tune you in if it. you saw their name? You said it, Spencer. It's got to be Ryan Spencer and then Spencer Hamilton. Oh, right. right? 
I would actually, I mean, dude. I'm down for Ryan Spencer because I went to Hawaii with him for like two weeks. Yeah. So I got him and I don't know Spencer Hamilton, but he might be down. Oh, he's Let's, sick. He's, he's uh, okay. Down. I got to go do Kyle Walker and get him to True. come out the yeah, you week do before him. Or, yours. Or Sebo, or, you know, you could do Sebo too. Or Clint Walker. There's True. a lot yeah. of options. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, yeah, Jake gotta... used to say this religiously. Kyle Walker Ryan. Everybody's Kyle or Walker or Ryan. Like everybody's <laughs> name's Kyle Walker Ryan. I was like, Jesus Christ. I he, love that. You get hung up on the funniest shit. Yeah. I was always tripping that, that he would even like recognize me. Like I would I wouldn't see him for like years and I'd be like randomly like on 16th and and mission and and he would walk by like you know, no offense, but almost looking like a homeless dude, you know, you're kind of, he's just sort of like trudging by and he's like, Oh, what's up Walker? Like, like as if I see him there every week, you know, but it would have been like years. Like yeah. what dude, you remember me? Fuck yeah. yeah he had he, that I, kind of memory, dude. And amazing. he had the nonchalant, uh, greeting yep. always, no matter what it was like, yeah, you've just spent like six months with him. It's like, no, I haven't seen you in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Well, sick, dude. Keep it going and good luck oh, yeah. to you with all these future endeavors. Let me know when the uh, audio stuff gets developed and stuff. Be interested cool. to yeah. check that. I bet you're learning a lot in the process, huh? Yeah. I'm learning a lot with everything, every every aspect of this. I mean, just the, the ease for anyone out there who wants to put out their own little book, if it's text or, or even photos, like I'm using this company called lulu.com. Lulu is the company. Someone orders a book, it gets made and sent anywhere in the world. It's crazy. Like I got people ordering books from Germany who get it in like five days because I think there's a print shop in in Germany or somewhere in Europe that's close. So it's like, it's really an empowering thing to be able to put out this kind of stuff on your own when you think there's so many, so many barriers and gatekeepers. Like it's been sick. And even with this, like you just gave me a little, you know, you, you're like, dude, it's not at t Park anymore, kook. <laughs> I can go and change that right now. And then every book from now on will not have that, you know, like it's All pretty right. cool. Then if you're going <laughs> to do that, I, I, I was taking it easy on you, <laughs> but the Cardiel rail is in Petrero Hill, not Bernal. Oh, Petrero. Well, it's like right on the, it's right on the <laughs> cusp, right? <laughs> you, it's, okay. Okay, cool. I used to live there. Yeah. Um, I feel like I nerded out on that forever too. Cause I was like, is it, where is the border? Because Bernal is Cortland. Okay. And this right. is, uh, that's like 20th and, uh, no, 22nd, I think. But it's right behind the uh, the general hospital. Yeah. The other side of the highway. Okay. So that is a, that is a key, you know, key yeah. note. But even my copy editor caught like so many other neighborhood distinctions, but she didn't Tell her to one. Google map that shit. Yeah, dog. <laughs> Hell yeah. But no, Fuck it's it's yeah, just a cool dude. thing. It's it's empowering. Anyone can do it. What about a tip? Do we take our phone out and talk into it and record our thoughts, or do we sit in front of and type them out for the beginning stages? Like, what would you say? Like, because you kind of inspired me. I'm diving into this idea. Like, uh, maybe I make a ten page book. Yeah, <laughs> but a you know, story. but like. Hey, ba 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 ba, and then I see it, and then later I'm like, that might inspire me to keep the next section going, or it might be a dud. I don't know, but like, how do you feel about it? Do you talk into it to get your thoughts out quicker, or do you actually type them out? I'm I'm usually longhand first, so like I'm, oh, I'm writing. writing something in a journal, yeah, okay, like a, like like an idea, you know, like or an outline for the steps that I want the story to go, like and bullet then, points. Yeah, kind of, or just like whatever little little thoughts come first. And usually that's just more accessible for me. I hate typing and I don't talk into things. Like I don't okay. really put, I don't know. It's just not how my, my process goes. So I'll uh, write some, write a little note, just kind of like just to get it out of my head. I, I sometimes don't even read it. Sometimes I will if, if it's for like a reference, but it sort of helps lock in the idea in my head. And then honestly, most of the process is just in my in my head until I have a moment to like write it down. Like I find that putting together this story helped me help like my sleeping problems. Like I could just, if I was going to sleep and I'm stressing about life and all my, my like real life problems, if I just think about the story and what I want to write in the morning or where, I, where I, the character's at, that helps me just like 
relax and go to sleep. It's your and happy I woke spot. Up, what's that? It's your happy spot. Kind of. Yeah. It's just like a, a place to let the, and then I feel like in your dreams, maybe this, you know, plot problems can sort of like resolve themselves and little things like that. And then I just write early in the morning and then that's kind of, you know, if I ever have downtime, I'm just sort of thinking about it, but I don't know. Everyone's different. You know, I feel like the, the talking into your phone could be good little voice memos, but there's so much time required to like then listen again. You know, I feel like. No, no, it prints it. Oh, that type. Oh, cool. Yeah. So then you can copy it and email it to yourself and then start forming these oh, things. Yeah. If you need help on that, a good tutorial person would be Alex Horn. Animo pues. He's great at driving and talking and texting. <laughs> His talk goes to text. <laughs> like, oh, that's cool. He's my favorite. Yeah, I've never, I've never, I've not quite evolved enough for that. <laughs> I, I haven't tried it. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Well, uh, cool, man. I might be hitting you up if I take this process the next step further. Do it, I might, dude. Yeah, you know, do it. get some get some little ideas out there, man. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Well, withers it is, and fucking used Still to be it. my homie. You know now me. you act like sweet one, know me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. This Thank you, man. Good, good catch it up. Cheers. Yeah. Have a good one. All right, later, bro. See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. Fuck are they, dude? I need, I need my talking Schmidt, man! It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes, with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at talkingschmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. Very special shout-out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper.